Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatih ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم ما شاء الله الحمد لله so today what we are going to do first is we are going to do a new concept or a series of new concepts, okay? Um, we have Anwar Ma'arif. I'm going to cover this first, and I, I'm going to do Idafa after this, inshallah. If I don't get a chance to do the Mudaf Mudaf Nilay, which is what Idafa is, then I'll do it in the following class, which is going to be on Monday, inshallah. But for now, we are going to do the types of definite Anwar Ma'arif, the type of definite Asna. The isn't that are definite, all the different categories, the seven categories, and we're going to explain them. Because I think it is necessary that we cover this, inshallah. Uh, in Arabic, there are seven types of definite ism. These are listed below. Ism al ism al mu'arrafu bi al. Inshallah. Al ism al mu'arrafu bi al. The ism that becomes mu'arraf, become that becomes definite because ad al is added to it. Right? Ism al alami. Ism al-Alami, like proper, proper names like Muhammad, Makkah, London, etc. Ism al-Munada, that is Biya, Ya or Ya Ayyuha, inshallah. Al-Asma al-Mawsula, well, we did this, inshallah. All of these at the top here, I'm going to explain them a little bit more, these four three categories, so we will have a slide or two on them, inshallah. Um, Asma al-Mawsula is Al-Ladhi, al and Al Uli, okay, and Alati, Alati, and Alai. <clears throat> this is the Asma al Mausula, and these are all Mabni, and we said the Muthanna is Morab. But the point is that these are these are all, and even the, 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 the Muthanna is also um, Ma'rifa. They are Ma'rifa, they are um, definite. The Damayr, all the Damayr that are Matasil and Munfasil are. معرفة أنا نحن أنت أنتم أنتما أنت أنتن هو هما هم هي هن all of them are معرفة all of them are معرفة and all of them also are مبني they are مبني so they have two characteristics that we have to be conscious about because um, that will help us in our understanding of the Arab when we get along to that inshallah um, <clears throat> so we have the Dama'il, all the Dama'il, right? All of these are Ma'arif, Asma'ul Ishara, the demonstrative pronouns. Example, Hada, like this. Hada means this, right? The set is Hada, Hadihi, Ha'ula'i, Thalika, Tilka, and Ulaika. Also the Muthanna, right? Hadani, Hadani, Hatani, right? And, and Thanika and Tanika, they are also Asma'ul Ishara, okay? And the seventh is al mudaf al mudafu ila ma'rifa. The indefinite possessed noun, which is connected to a definite noun in a possessive construction. Example, kitabuhu. Right? The construction is kitabuhu. It is definite. It is his book. So it's a construction. It is two words. Okay? Kitabul mudarrisi. The book of the teacher. Right? The teacher's book. Any one of that is... Any one of that is a correct translation, right? So is the indefinite, the indefinite possessed noun. What is possessed? In both cases, is the book. It is indefinite, right? Kitabu 
al mudarisi kitabuhu it is indefinite right it is possessed and it is connected to a definite noun we said that the the damir is connected to here his book is always always definite right is ma'rifa okay we did that here already okay we said the damir mutasil aw munfasil they are all they are all ma'rifa kitab al mudarisi kitab is is connected to al mudarisi the mudarris becomes ma'rifa with al so we say when the indefinite possess noun is connected to a definite is in a possessive construction right and this is a construction kitab al mudarris or kitabu that's the construction is two it consists of two words but it is not a sentence because we said in in arabic they are possessive phrases they are uh, phrases okay they are phrases in arabic or fragments or uh, the, 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 the jumla that is naqis the jumla that is incomplete because it does not complete a faida it does not give a, a is not mufid it does not give a beneficial meaning so these two words they do not give a benefit they just tell me kitabul mudarris what about kitabul mudarris is it burnt or is it broken or is it on the desk or is it, the teacher lost it what what whatever it is i don't know right so it is not a complete sentence it's not a complete thought so that is the um, the seven categories there you have to learn them inshallah definiteness a tarif this al al muarrafu bi al right so we call it a tarif each ism is either ma'rifa meaning it is definite this indicates that it, it refers to something specific something specific that is something that is known like the book we know which book you're talking about because it is the book it's not any book right it is the book that's a particular book okay it is the book okay so that is essential to pay attention to right and that is translated as al kitab and or it is it is ma'rifa each ism is either ma'rifa or nakira or it is indefinite which is an unspecified item like a book can be any book okay any book it can be it can be just any book it's not just anything particular right in arabic if a noun is nakira indefinite if an ism if an ism is indefinite nakira it generally takes can mean can mean dharma can mean kasra and in fact if it is indefinite that is a sign of its indefinite this is because there is no word for a or an in arabic right so in an ism that is indefinite an ism that is indefinite that is nakira is translated into english with with a or an like kitabun See here. So a noun that is indefinite is translated into English with an a or an an. Like kitabun is translated as a book. It's not just translated as book. It is translated as a book. In Arabic, there is nothing to say that a book or a uh, an elephant or an egg. There's nothing to indicate that except. So we say fi lun, right? Fi lun is um, a an elephant. right baydatun is an egg okay kitabun is a book um, maktabun is a desk okay so uh that is something that you should know there is no a or an in arabic language however some indefinite nouns do not take the a or the an example ma'un water or wind you don't say a wind you don't say a water right like that okay so we trans is translated as water or wind or the like inshallah so that is pretty simple that is revision okay so first the first category they are talking about talking about out, out of the seven categories al ism al muarrafu bi al the ism that becomes ma'rifa because of al added to it this one 
that becomes definite when L is connected to it. I read as if, as if it's a statement. The first is that isma muaraf bi al. That is the ism that becomes definite when al is connected to it. Al corresponds to the definite article in the English language. It means the, and it refers to a specific object, to so something specific. An ism that is connected to al becomes definite. Example, kitabun becomes al kitabu. When al is added to it, it means the book. Kitab means a book. Right now it becomes definite, so it is the book. So that's the first thing about it. All of this is revision, inshallah. So that's why I'm. If anybody has any problems, they can they can stop me, um, and we will explain. The definite article only enters upon, upon asma. Asma is the plural for ism. It only enters upon asma. Definite article al only enters upon asma. It does not enter upon the af'al or the faruf. Okay? An ism is changed to its marva form by taking al and the tanween, the tanween on the last letter of the word is changed to a single haraka. Here we have some example. Right? Inna hamdan. In alhamda, okay. So we say in the hamdan. You see this? It is hamdan. It has no alif and lam. But if we have in alhamda, if we have alif and lam. It takes the alif and lam. If it takes the alif and lam, it becomes definite, and the uh, the termin is dropped. Hamdun becomes alhamdu. Hamdun becomes alhamdu. Alhamdu. Because it takes the alif and lam to the tanwin drops. No word can take, no ism can take um, the alif and lam, the definite article, and uh, the tanwin at the same time. We have fi masjidin, right? But when alif and lam is added to it, it becomes fil masjidi. The tanwin is dropped again, inshallah. Okay? Note. This is an important note. No ism, no ism can take al and tanween at the same time. This is mustahil, it is impossible, right? It is not possible for this to happen. Okay? <clears throat> Got it, inshallah? We are clear up to this time before we move on to the other concept? Yes, alhamdulillah, clear. Alhamdulillah. No, I'm sure. Good. So we don't, all of these concepts are very easy, right? Simple up to this time, inshallah. Okay. Second is the proper, the proper noun, like Ismail Alam, like Muhammadun Makkatun, a Makkatu. Makkatu is Mamnu Minasaf, right? Mamnu Minasaf, because it is, it is a feminine name. Also, it's a proper name that is feminine. Okay. So asma, the plural for ism, are either common <clears throat> or proper. The, definite, the difference between a common and a proper ism is simply the difference of a general and a specific thing. So if you're speaking of a city, that is any city, then city is common, is a common ism. Like for example, you say Medina Tun. However, if you're speaking about a specific city, say Mecca, then this is a proper ism. Below are some additional examples. Let us get the examples so we'll see it. A river, any river is Nahrun. Okay? Any river is Nahrun. But when you say Nail and Nilu, even without the Al, Al Nilu is, if, you, if, it, if it is written without the Al, right? But Al Nilu is written with the Al, right? Um, it is Ma'rifa. Uh, it is proper. Sorry. It is proper because we're dealing with proper and common. In Arabic, we don't really have too much um, word for common as far as I know. A man, a man, Rajulun, Muhammadun, as a specific person, as a name of a person, so that's proper. Right? The Rajul is not, be, is not proper, right? A city, Medinatun, and then we have Makkatu is 
um, the name of a specific city. In English, the difference is simply represented by the, uh, by the common noun being in common letters, while the proper, noun, uh, the proper nouns are written in capital letters. As you see over here, we see river, common letter, a man, a city, all in common letters. Here, where, when it is proper, it's Neil, Nile, Muhammad, Mecca. In Arabic, there's nothing that indicates this, okay? So it is proper names, it is proper nouns, proper ism, things that are proper, that are definite, um, not definite, no, it's definite, it's different. It's proper names, ismul alam, okay. The third category is al ismul munada biya. Al ismul munada biya. Here they say it is just al ismul munada biya. This is definite. Okay, and this is because ayuha and things like that they have to be added onto a definite noun, a definite ism. Like for example, ya ayuha nasu. And nasu is already definite because it has, it has alif and lam. But ya by itself, you can say ya rajulu, ya waladu, ya muhammadu, okay? You can say that. So the, the, the third category is not any munada, not any ism that is called with address. It is the ism al-munada, the ya, when ya is added to that ism, in front of that ism, to call someone. That is the ism addressed by ya. This is the ism, waladun. Is addressed by ya. Okay, what is used to address the, the, the walad is ya. Ya waladu. Okay, now we're going to see something here because you, as we said, right, the tanween is dropped from the ism when it becomes ma'rifa. Okay, so that's, that's what happens here, inshallah. So we have ya plus as the harful nida. So we have the harful nida, that's the first thing, right? Ya is a harf of nida is a half to, that is used to call. And it's translated as O in English. Yeah, the particle used for calling someone is translated as O in English, right? O. Al waladu. Yeah, plus al waladu. Al waladu is definite, right? It's a definite person he's talking to. So generally, uh, we put it as al waladu but when the two come together, okay, let us explain this first. al waladu here is what is being called. It's called ismul munada, ismul munada, like here. Al ismul, al ismul munada, the ism that is called. Al ismul munada, al ismul munada, okay? That's what it is. So this is the ism that is called. This is the half that is used to call. This is the ism that is called. It becomes, okay, the one that is called is called, the one that is called is al ismul munada. Ya plus al waladu becomes ya waladu. Ya waladu. Okay? When al ismul munada is preceded by ya, the half nida, the ismul munada is this, this word here, is the ismul munada. When it is preceded by the half nida, this is the half nida, okay? The al is dropped from it, as you see. This al here is dropped from the ismul munada, and it does not take tanween. So it becomes ya waladu, okay? It becomes ya waladu. So the same thing, if you want to say ya, you, you have a man in front of you, you want to say ya rajulu. You have your dot in front of you, ya bintu, ya zawjatu. I mean, normally you say ya zawjati, or you know, you add the ya to it. That, that, that does not, it's not, it is still the munara, it is still munara, but it does not, you, you do not see. If I say ya zawjatu, or ya zawju, she says ya zawju, okay, you know, that's how it would be uh, munara. Ya rabbu. Yeah. Ya Rabbal Alameen, Ya Rabbu, Ya Rahmanu, Ya Rahimu. You know, you call on Allah like that. Ya Allahu, right? 
Ya Rabbu ya you don't say Ya Rabbun Ya Rahmanun Ya Rahimun you say Ya Rabbu Ya Rahmanu Ya Rahimu Ya Ghafuru Ya Sattaru Ya Sattiru Sattir is the word I think not Sattar Sattar is not one of the names of Allah okay so it drops the tanween okay there is no tanween it does not take tanween okay note even if it is a proper noun an ism al alam like hamidun when the ya comes before it al ism does not take tanween dhamma so it reads ya hamidu so the tanween drops right from all even ya muhammadu ya ya khalidu anyone even if has tanween but those that don't have tanween ya hamzatu ya usamatu you know you know uh, like ya ibrahimu ya ya musa ya isa it it still indicates that the tanween has to drop from it from the ones that have the tanween on them right those that are ismul alam so is that clear are we clear on this okay this is a new concept but it only has to deal with ya bil ya al munada ismul al munada bil bil ya bil ya is that clear inshallah no. Okay, so you go back and you you do it back, inshallah. And, uh, you see, it's not a difficult concept. Okay, so let us move on, inshallah. Let us get some example. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to Him belongs the best names, so invoke Him by them. Walillahi al Asma ul Husna. Walillah, and for Allah, the wow here means and. Lillahi, it's supposed to be Lillahi. Lillah and for Allah is Al Asma Ul Husna are the best names. The best names. So Fadu Biha. So call on him using them. Right? So Allah is telling us in the Quran to call on him using these names. Okay. So these are some examples in this regard. Two of the most popular names of the most high, that's Allah, used in dua are Allah, Lafzul Jalala, and Al Rabbu. And there are different ways in which they are used. They are suitable to be used to ask for anything. Both of these names, Allah or Ya Rabb, Ya Allahu or Ya Rabbu, Rabbun is the ism, it has tanween on it. But when we say Ya Rabbu, the tanween drops, right? When we put Ya in front of it, because it becomes the ismul munada. The harful nida is Ya. Ism Munada is the name that is the, the, the name that is the, the ism that is addressed, right? So in this case, it is Lafzul Jalal Allah. So we say Ya Allah. Now Allah is already Ma'rifa. So that is, there is no technicality there. It already has, it doesn't have tanween. But like Rabbun is Nakira. So if we add, if we add Ya in front, in front of it, it becomes Ya Rabbu. So we have Allah, Ya Allahu, O Allah. Okay? We have Allahumma. Okay. Instead of saying ya, I'm, I'm just adding this. Now, this is not a part of the there's this is just additional benefit, inshallah. Allahumma means oh Allah also. Allahumma anta Rabbi. La ilaha illa anta. Allahumma anta salam. You know, so you use Allahumma a lot. You use ya a lot. Ya Allah. Okay. So you have. Allahumma anta Rabbi. Allahumma anta Rabbi. La ilaha illa anta. This is a part of a dua that's very popular. Allahumma anta Rabbi. So you can learn it. When you decide to learn the rest of the dua, at least you learn this piece. Allahumma anta Rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. Allahumma anta Rabbi. The Rabb, the word Rabb. A Rabbu. We have there are some pieces left out here that are going to come later. Maybe that's because of the animation. When I change it up, I um, I did not do it well. I did not reanimate it. Sometimes I miss it on one slide and it confuses the entire thing. Anyways, the issue is that we are dealing with. These two names, Allah and our Rabb, and we are trying to see how they are used. We see this in the Quran a lot. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adhaban naar. 
Rabbana la tazik qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. Now, we see this, right? But the ya is understood. Because, look, this is Rabbun. This is something, this is something that you will learn when we do the mudaf, mudaf nilay. Rabbun is added to na. It is supposed to read when they come together, Rabbuna. It is supposed to read Rabbuna. But we see in the Quran all over the place, Rabbana, la tazik qulubana, ba'da idh hadaytana, Rabbana, atina fid dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa kina adhabana, Rabbana, innana amanna faghfirana, Rabbana. We don't see the ya. But how do we know it's a ya that is there? Because of this fatha. Because if it wasn't a yad here, that is mahdoof, that is not present, but it's understood to be there, it would have, be, it would have read, Rabbuna atina fid dunya hasana. But basically we are saying, ya Rabbana. Okay? So that is something that is important to pay attention to. That, so when you go to the Quran, you see, because it starts at the beginning of sentence, right? All of these start sentence. Rabbana innana amanna faghfirlana. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladun farrahma. Rabbana la tu'akhizna in nasina aw akhta'ana. You see all of it has Rabbana. You don't see Rabbuna. Okay? Whereas it is supposed to be Rabbuna in a general way, in a general situation, without it being, uh, if it was not affected by something in front of it. There has to be something mahdoof. There has to be something missing because of the fatha. Okay? Anyways, Rabbana, right? Rabbana ghfir lana dhunubana. This is how it is used in the Quran. Rabbana, Rabbana gh. This noon is joined to the ghain because of the sukun. This alif has nothing on it. Right? This alif has nothing on it. So it's not even read. Right? So you don't say Rabbana ghfir lana. You say Rabbana ghfir lana. Rabbana ghfir lana dhunubana. Rabbana khfir lana zunubana, O our Lord, O our Lord, forgive us. Ikhfir means forgive us. Forgive. Lana means us, for us. Zunubana, our sins, right? Our zunub, our zunub. All right. Inshallah. So we understand it, right? Everybody's with me? Okay. Here, as I said, uh, we're going back, but we're going back. That's not no problem. Ya Rabbu. Ya Rabbu. Oh, oh my oh Lord. Right? It means oh Lord. Ya Rabbu means oh Lord. Ya Rabbu. You don't have to say Ya Rabbu. You can say just Ya Rabbu, and that's enough of your dua. Ya Rabbu. Ikhfirli. Ya Rabbu. Ya Rabbu. You know, I'm in serious situation, you know, so help me. Okay, on Surni. Anyhow, Ya Rab can be used, right? Like Ya Allah. You don't say Ya Allahu. You can say that. And Allahumma, well, you say that. But you can say Ya Rab. You don't have to say Ya Rabbu. But it's allowed to say Ya Rabbu also. Okay? And then we have, for the other case with Rab, we have Rabbi. It is Rabbun. Rabbi, you would see this a lot. Rabbi Jalni Mukima Salat. Rabbi Jalni, you see that, right? Rabbi. So when you see it in the Quran now, you know why it is like this, right? Because there is a yeah that is supposed to be add, added to Rabbun. So it becomes, it would become Rabbi. Rabbi. Okay? It would become, yeah, it would become Rabbi if I put the two together. My Lord. But when I use it as munada, in the case I'm asking Allah, Rabbik fearly, Rabbik fearly, right? Um, see here, Rabbi. It is never supposed to be Rabb. It is never supposed to be Rabbi by itself, because there is nothing in front of it. It didn't say Ila Rabbi, okay? It didn't have anything to affect it to make it Rabbi. So what is affecting it? Is the fact that it is connected to the ya, but the ya is dropped. We say it's mahdoof. The ya drops off. Okay? It drops off. Um, and it just it is just rabbi. You know, like for example, if you go to the Quran, Wama khalaqtul jinnah in Surah Dhariyat, 
um, chapter 55, ayah 51. Allah says, illa liyabudun. Right? And you would see in that, let me, I'm going to write this at the end here somewhere. Yabudun. Right? If you go there, you see a kashra. You see a kashra on the meat. Right? Yeah, it's supposed to be Yabuduna. Okay, it's supposed to be Yabuduna. This can never, that, that noon can never take us from. So, what it implies here is, Illa li Yabudu ni the Ya becomes Mahzuf. Right? The Ya becomes drop. Right? So, it becomes, so you understand. And I did not create jinn and mankind except to worship me, not just to worship. Allah is specific. The not, the, just the kashra there, the kashra indicates ya'buduni. Okay? So that is the same thing here. I say rabbi. It means ya rabbi khfirli. Ya rab, oh my lord, forgive me. But I'm just using all of these just to give you some additional, these are some additional pointers to help you figure out why some words have rabbana and it is rabbana, not rabbuna. And why it is rabbi and not rabbu. Right? You don't see ever it's rabbu khfirli. You always see Rabbi Khfirli, right? Rabbi Khfirli, oh my Lord, forgive me, okay? So you understand how uh, this is the case. The Yah is dropped. This is indicated by the Kashwa on the last letter. The Yah is dropped here, so it is indicated by the last letter, the Kashwa on the last letter. Oh my Lord, forgive me, right? So um, inshallah, those are the, those are for additional information. So alhamdulillah, you have that sorted out. So let us start, get some more here. We have some of Allah's other names, Ar Rahmanu. Okay. This means Asna Asna Lai Husna. It's entirely merciful. So you become it becomes Ya Rahmanu Irhamni. Ya Rahmanu Irhamni. Irham means have mercy. But Irhamni, the Ya there is upon me. So you say Ya Rah, you, we are we are trying to make dua to Allah with his names, right? So we're using the names that is Munasim. Rahman, Ar Rahman comes from Rahima, three letters. Okay, like Rahim. Irhamni, Irhamni, it means Irham plus this noon plus a ya. The noon is not really a part of the word, right? We are not going to discuss that now, though. It is added. It's called noon al Waqai. But we're going to add that, we're going to talk about that later. Okay? So it's Irhamni, Irhamni, which means, oh, entirely merciful, have mercy on me. So you can, you know, in Ramadan, you can use this now. Ya Rahmanu, Irhamni, Ya Rahimu, Rahimu is the especially merciful, right? Ya Rahimu, Irhamni, Sim Irhamni. The word, the, the, you're using the name with the verb that is suitable, that matches it. Ya Rahmanu, Irhamni, Ya Rahimu, Irhamni. Because both of them comes from Rahima. Okay? Oh, entirely merciful, have mercy on me. Then we have Al Ghaffaru, right? Oh, perpetual forgiver. He's a perpetual, he's ever, 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 ever forgiving, right? This is on a higher state than Ghafur. Ghaffar is much more emphatic than Ghafur. All of both of them are, are, are emphatic in the sense that they, that they describe the one who's forgiving, that is Allah, right? So you say, Ya Ghaffaru. You don't say, Ya Al Ghaffaru. Right? You say, Ya, you drop the Al because of the Ya. Right? Ya Ghaffaru Ighfirli. Ya Ghaffaru Ighfirli. Oh, perpetual forgiver, forgive me. Okay? Ya Ghaffuru, the forgiving. Right? Ya Ghaffuru Ighfirli. The same, the same construction is used for both, like Irhamni Ighfirli, because they come from the same. Root word, ra, fa, and ra. Ghafara means to forgive. He forgive, right? Ghafara, yaghfiru. So you say, ya ghafaru, ikhfirli. Ya ghafuru, ikhfirli. Anyone you choose is okay, right? Oh, forgive or forgive me, right? Ya afu, the one who pardons. Allah is the afu. Allahumma innaka afu, tuhibbu al-afu. Fa'afu anni. Ya afu. Fa'afu anni. Ya'afu'u fa'afu anni. I can say that. 
But the better advice to make Allahumma innaka afuun to hibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni. Okay? This means, oh, the one who pardons, pardon me. Okay? And then you have at-tawabu. Allah is at-tawab. Ya tawabu. Tub alayhi. Ya tawabu. Tub alayhi. You can learn, you can memorize all of this and use it in your dua, inshallah. Or ever accepting of repentance. Accept my repentance. Ya tawabu. Tub alayhi. The most generous. Ya karimu. Allah is karim. Allah is generous, right? The most generous. Akrimni. Be generous to me. Akrim and the noon again. You see like the first one, irhamni. Right? We bring it here to show that particular construction. The noon is added here and the ya, right? The ya is what is important. It's not a noon. The noon is just added to help in the um, pronunciation and make things easier from a pronunciation level, the Arabic language, right? Oh, the most generous or almost generous, be generous to me. So inshallah. I mean, those are things to help you to understand the ya, yeah, okay? The ya yeah of nida. Okay. The phrase or incomplete sentence. al muraqqabun naqisu al jumlatun ghayru mufidatin. Right? R5. The demonstrative phrase, al muraqqab al ishari The possessive phrase, al muraqqab al idafi The descriptive or adjectival phrase, al muraqqab al tawsifi The numerical phrase, al muraqqab al adadi and then the indeclinable phrase, al muraqqab man al-sarfi. And this is very, very real. So we are not even going to even think about doing that from now for a long time. The numerical phrase, we're going to possibly do that later. But it is not so important in our level of studies. So the three that we are going to really be concentrating on are um, these three, inshallah, right? These are the, the ones that we're going to be concentrating on. I'm going to be trying. I'm going to try to cover these two, this class and the next class, inshallah, if I can finish it now. Although I think it's difficult. A lot of time has already passed, inshallah. But I'm going to try to finish. Uh, I don't want to really run it through too. But before we get into that, we understand the ya, yeah, we understand the al. We understand all of those, right? All of those, um, the, 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 the three categories of Is it irhim irhamni rahima yarhamu? Right? Get it? If you say rabbuna, it is still supposed to carry the meaning rabbuna, but it would mean that there is no. Um, it would mean that there is no. There is no ya that is that is, is 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 understood to be there in front of it. It's just rabbuna, rabbuna rahamna. I mean that is that is fine, inshallah. But the way it is used in the Quran all the time, which is the better way to do it, obviously, because it is an it's imploring Allah, right? So you say ya rabbana. You say you don't say ya. You say rabbana atina fi dunya. You don't say rabbuna atina fi dunya because Allah teaches us this way, and this is the best way to do it, inshallah, right? Um, in relation to the, is it irhamni or irhamni? Is it rabbirhamni? Because we have to go back to the verb. The verb is rahima yarhamu. Irham. The fel amr is irham, the, the command form. So that is what the ya is connected to. Ya Rahimu Irhamni. So it is not Irhimni. Rahima is a past tense, right? And um, it is not connected to the Ya. Ya is not connected to the past tense. It is connected to the Fel Amr. Uh, the, you're making dua with the Fel Amr. You know, like you say, Ihdina Surat al Mustaqim. Ihdi, the verb is Hada Yahdi Ihdi, right? So you see, Ihdina. If you go to it, you see Alif, Ha, and the Hamza, you see Ihdini. I, B. 
ihdi. You don't see ihdi because the ya is dropped when it's a fair amount. So you say ihdina sirat al mustaqim, right? Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Um, so I hope that makes it clear for the rahima yarhamu irham. So it becomes yar ya rahimu irhamni. Okay, got it? Inshallah. Understood now? Okay. Okay, we have no more to all this, inshallah. We are going to explain those three, inshallah. Okay. So we have the demonstrative phrase, al muraqqab al ishari. You know what is the asma al ishari, right? Do you know? Hada, hazihi, hadani, hatani, ulaika, ah, ha ulai. For the ismu al ishara, the ba'id is dhalika, tilka, ulaika. Zanika, Tanika, you understand? You understand that? You know what we're talking about? Demonstrative, right? When we say demonstrative, we're saying demonstrative pronoun, we understand what we're talking about, right? It's Hada, Zalika, Tilka, Ulaika. We understand it, right? Now we're talking about a phrase that involves one of these demonstrative nouns, right? How do we recognize when it is a phrase and when it is a sentence? Because, for example, if I say, Hada waladun, hada is there. Waladun means a boy. This is a boy. That's a complete statement. Right? So when does it become a phrase? So let us go through. At least we can you can um, you can be thinking about this, inshallah. Let us see what we get here, inshallah. The demonstrative phrase. Al muraqab al ishari. It is a phrase whereby one ism, one ism, which is the ismul ishara, one ism, the ismul ishara, you know what's the ismul ishara? The ismul ishara is hadha, hadhihi, ulaika, hadhani, hatani, tilka, haulai, dhalika, tanika, tainika. That's the ismul ishara, right? Any one of those is called an ismul ishara. So it points to another noun, which is called al-musharu ilay. Ishara, if you see here, we add meme here, ishara, meme musharu, right? We add a meme to the, we have ishara, shara, right? We drop off the, the um, and we add a meme here. No, this is I'm not good at this at all. No. You raise this and then I'll try to write it back. You see the word, if you look at the word here, Right? Ishara means point, right? It's pointing to another word which is called al mushar ilay. Al mushar ilay is the thing that it is pointed to. Right? And it has to be a noun because you can't point to a verb or a, you can't point to a fail or a half. You have to point to a noun, something that you can see, something that is tangible, right? Um, so it is pointing to another noun. We have uh, mushar, basically, if you see, Mushar here, it has a sheen, alif, and ra, right? Sheen, alif, and sheen, alif, and ra. What is added is mim. Ashara, it comes from the 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 the, the, the verb, the fell. Ashara yeshiru, fahuwa mushir. Okay. Um. Anyways, and huwa mushar ilay, right? Well, Mushi, who is the one that is pointing, and Mushari is the one is what he's pointing to. But it comes from the same word, the Ishara word, which means which is about pointing, it's about demonstrating something. Okay. For a phrase to be al muraqqab al Ishari, the ism that is pointed to, that is al Mushari, like must have the definite article. Must have the definite article. Okay. So we have, for example, here. 
هذا جزء اسم الإشارة الولد is a مشاري لي so it is the هذا is pointed to الولد now this means this boy it does not mean this is a boy okay it is not the same as هذا ولد you understand in order for it to be a مركب إشاري it must be مشاري لي is the next word in the sentence right after هذا must have Alif and Lam must have Alif and Lam. You understand the difference? You know, for example, in the Quran, we see Allah says, "Zalik al Kitab." Zalik al Kitab. How would you translate it? Zalik Kitab means that is a book. Zalik al Kitab means that book. That's the difference. Okay, we're going to see some of that in the, in the example that we're going to provide now, inshallah. But we get this, inshallah. Or we, anybody want me to explain anything back? On this level, we need any additional explanation here, or this is clear. It is all simple. It is simple, right? It is two words coming together, hada and another noun. Okay. In order to be a demonstrative, a demonstrative phrase, al murakkab al shari, all that has to happen is the word that comes after hada has to have an alif and lam. That's it. You understand? Shall we? All right, let me go on. Inshallah, if you don't understand, you can always say it. Mm -hmm. Note, if, if the Mushari line, which is a noun that is pointed to, does not have Al, now we are saying it has Al, then it, become, it becomes al muraqqab al shari if it does not have al, that is, it is indefinite, then it will be a complete sentence. Then that will be a complete sentence. For example, hada wala dun. There is no alif and lam in front of it, right? So this means this is a boy. That's how you understand the difference between the two. So if you see hada rajulun, it means this is a man. Dalika rajulun, right? That is a man. Tilka. Bintun, that is a girl. If I say, هذا الولد, this boy. ذلك الولد, that boy. هذه البنتو, this girl. تلك البنتو, that girl. Right? تلك is that. Right? So that is what it is. That's the difference between the two. Inshallah. <clears throat> if the predicate the predicate. We know in every sentence there are two parts, the subject and the predicate. Subject is, is what is being discussed, uh, and the predicate is what talks about the subject. Subject is what we're talking about. And then the predicate describes, right? The predicate, that's these fancy words in English, um, is not the same in Arabic, you know? It's called a khabar. The khabar, the muqtada, is what we start with, right? That's what it means in Arabic. Muqtada, the sentence is made up of two parts for the jumla to the Muqtada and khabar. Muqtada is what we start with. Comes from bada, which means to start. Muqtada is what we start with, what we are talking about. And the khabar is information about the muqtada. That's what it is. Very simple and it explains it very beautifully. If the predicate is also definite, the khabar is also definite, then a suitable pronoun, a suitable damir, should be added between the subject, which is a demonstrative pronoun, and the predicate for it to remain a complete sentence. Now, if the predicate, now we have, um, we have three situations here, right? One, the situation where the mushar and the mushar relay is, uh, the mushar relay is definite. So we say, had al waladu, okay? If we drop off the definition and we make it, had a waladun, like in this example here, had a waladun, right? We drop off the alif from lam. That's the second case, right? This is a complete sentence. Now, if this waladun becomes had a waladu, but we still want to that we want it to remain as a sentence, right? Okay. If we want it to remain as a sentence, then we have to have a suitable damir added here. And the alif and lam added to the wallet. Okay, that's what this, that's all this is saying here. 
Okay, let us get the example so this will make it clear. So we have Hazal, if we say Hazal Kitabu, it would mean this book. Now I want it, I want to keep it as a sentence. So I say, I, I want to keep these two words, keep the Alif and Lam with its Alif and Lam, but still keep it as a sentence, right? So I have to add here a suitable pronoun. The suitable pronoun here is Hua because Kitab is masculine. So this is masculine. Kitab is singular. So this is singular, right? So um, it would be the suitable pronoun to add. If it was something like Madrasatun, uh, Hadihi, Hadihil Madrasatu, right? The suitable pronoun for, for that would be Hadihi, Hiyal Madrasatu. Okay, now how is this translated? Hada waladun translate as this is a boy. Hada waladu translate as this boy. Now, Hada who will waladu translate as this as the, uh, this is the boy. Okay. Hada waladun huna. Hada waladun huna translate as this is a boy. This is a boy, right? Uh, Hada who will if I say walad here, hada who will waladu, it is mean it is translated as this is the boy. So that is the difference. Instead of the boy, we know this is the boy I'm talking about, right? So um it might sound confusing, it's not that confusing. If no damir is added, it would remain an incomplete sentence. So if this damir is not added, this is not added, it would be hada kitabu. And that would make it uh, this book. And this is called a demonstrative phrase, which is al-muraqqa bil Okay? All right. Let us see what we have here. Hada al kitabu. This book. That is what, that is what is a muraqqa bil Right? Right? Um, oh, anyhow, I thought there was something else to that. Okay. Now let's get some examples of this. So you would learn it. You would, you would be able to... Um, to work with it. Zalika kitabun. How would you translate this? Quickly. Zalika kitabun. That's a complete statement, right? That's a jumlatul ismiya. Jumlatul ismiya is a complete sentence. How would you translate it? Come on, quickly. That is a book, right? Okay, that is a book. Now, if I make it al muraqqabul ishari what do I have to do to make it to make it muraqqabul ishari I add, I add here, alif and lam, right? So it becomes dhalikal kitab. Notice I add alif and lam. So it changes from that is a book to that book. Get it? Inshallah. We have it. No, no. You're with, it. You're with me, right? Okay. Now, I want to keep this, this structure, Dalikal Kitabu, but I want to keep it in a sentence. I, want, I don't want to make it a, a phrase like that book. I want to keep it and make it into a sentence. So what do I do? I add a suitable pronoun here. Now, because this is masculine and singular, the best pronoun to add here is huwa. So I say, dhalika huwa al-kitab. You understand? See it now? So how does this translate? Dhalika, that, is the book. Okay? That is the book. See the difference? Dhalika kitabun, that is a book. Dhalika kitabu, that book. Dhalika huwa al-kitabu, that is the book. Now the is, like in this case, there is no is here. Dalika kitabun, there is no is, right? So it is, it is understood in the Jumla to the This is called a Jumla to the which is the, um, the sentence as translated as nominative sentence into English. Dalika, dalika kitabu, that book. Dalika huwa kitabu, that is the book. Get it, inshallah? Yeah, huwa, correct, mashallah. All right, let us see what we have here. Hada baladun. What does balad mean? Anybody know what balad means? Song or country. country. Yeah. Balad means country, right? Hada baladun. 
this is a city. This is a city, one city. That's a complete statement. Now, I want to make it Murakabal Shari. What do I do? I add Alif and Lam here and drop the Tanween here, right? So I have al baladu. Has al baladu. This, how does this translate now? This is no longer a sentence, right? So it, it, it becomes a um it, it becomes a phrase, a murakab. Right? Correct? This city, mashallah. It, it becomes this city. Now I want to keep it as a sentence. So what do I do? I add a suitable pronoun between the two words, between hadha and al-baladu. So it becomes hadha huwa al-baladu. Hadha huwa al-baladu. Correct. Hadha huwa al-baladu. Everybody's with me? Are you all with me? This is the city. This is the city. Got it? Inshallah. All right. Very good. Alhamdulillah. All right, so you, you're going to do the rest. There are six more to do, but we want it done fast, right? Because I don't have a lot of time. Asr is going to come in any time now, inshallah. So uh, please forgive me for that. Now, tilka bintun. Let me see who's going to get this right. What's the translation? First translation, come quickly. Tilka bintun. That, that is a girl. It's not this, this is that, right? I know I catch you. I know that, inshallah. That is a girl. Okay, next one. I want to say al muraqab al in this case. What do I do? I add alif and lam here, and I drop the tanween. So it becomes tilkal bintu. Tilkal bintu. Tilkal bintu. All right. Is there a sister on the... Also participating in the talking, please come off. We had already just agreed on that. No sister is going to participate in the uh, in the conversations that we have live. Okay. Right. Inshallah. All right. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So we have tilkal bintu, which means which means that girl. Correct. That girl. That girl, right. Now I want to keep the sentence. What do I do? Tilka. Yeah. Yeah. Now, tilka he al bintu. Notice we have to get a word that is, and how does this translate? How tilka he al bintu translate? That is a girl. That is not correct. That is a girl, isn't correct. That Look. is the girl. That is the girl, correct. Yeah. That is the girl because it has alif and lam, right? Be careful, right? Be careful with that because you want to get all the translations correct. Okay, tilka he al bintu means that is the girl. Correct? Tayyib. Get the next one. This is enjoyable, right? You're enjoying this? You're not enjoying this? You should be enjoying it. Beautiful. Makes you it makes things clearer, you know. What does this mean? That is a pen. That is a pen. It's not that a pen. No, that is a pen. It's a complete statement. Okay. That is a pen. So I want to make it, I want to make it a murakabishari. A phrase, from a sentence to a phrase. What do I do? I add alif and lam here and take off the tanween, right? Because alif and lam and tanween cannot exist in the same word. So I have dhalikal qalamu. Dhalikal qalamu. And that means, what does that mean? That, that, that pen. pen. That pen, correct. That pen. And then I want to make it into, I want to remain, retain the sentence, right? Between dhalika and al qalamu. I want to retain the sentence there. What do I add? I add a suitable pronoun, huwa. which is, in this case, huwa. So it would be, dhalika huwa al-qalamu. Dhalika huwa al-qalamu. That is the pen. That is the pen. Okay. Tilka ayatun. Tilka ayatun. Ayat, you know what ayat is? Ayat is uh, the sign Sign. and the, the evidences in the Quran, right? Ayat, 
Many people translate this as verses, right? I prefer not to translate it as verse because the Quran is not like poetry. I prefer to translate it as evidence and signs and, you know, this type of, um, this kind of connotation rather than, than verses. Verses give the idea of poetry and the Quran is not poetry. Okay, the Quran is ayat. Okay. Um, in, in, in Arabic, poetry for, a, for one line, it's called a, a bait. All right, a bait, like bait for, for house. So it's not called ayah, you know? And, uh, okay, tilka, oh, I give it away, man. This, was a, this would have been a nice one for everybody. Right, because it's ayat, right? Ayat is plural. So tilka here, as we said, when something is inanimate, does not have akal. Like in this case, the ayat does not have akal, right? So it uses the feminine singular to, to represent it. So it becomes tilkal ayat. All of you would have gotten this wrong. Okay? Tilkal ayat is those are. Right? We don't use ulaika. Those are signs. Right? Those are ayats. Now, when I add, I want to make it um, al muraqqab al shari. I add al in front of it. Right? Al in front of it. And I take off the tenween. So it becomes tilkal ayatu, right? Tilkal ayatu means those signs, correct. Those signs, mashallah. You're getting it, all right? And now I want to keep the sentence with al ayat in it instead of ayat. We know we already have a sentence with ayat, tilka ayatu. Those are signs. Tilkal ayatu, we want to translate it as tilka. How are we going to say it? Yeah. Yeah. Hiya, right? Correct. It is not hunna, right? It is hiya. It is not hunna. We don't use the plural, although the ayah is plural. We use tilkal ayatu because it's ghayr al and the ghayr al is represented by the singular feminine. Okay? So what does this translate it? Translate that? Mm -hmm. Those are the signs. Correct. Those are the signs. Final one, haulai kaumun, haulai kaumun. Okay, how does this translate? Haulai is the plural for hada or hadihi. Okay, kaum is a is a people. Those are or these are to be these. These are these are a people. These are a people. Haulai kaumun. These are a people. Okay, I want to I wanted to to become an ishari. Situation, what do I do? I add alif and lam to it here and drop the tenwin. So it becomes haulail kaumu. Haulail kaumu. Haulail kaumu. Right? These, we drop off the, the R and the A here. These people. Right? These people. So the R and the A drop out and the A. Right? Like in this case, that is a girl. I drop off the is and the A. Those are ayats, those are signs I drop off the R, right? You understand, it's the same thing here, okay? These people, and if I want to keep the al kaumu, inshallah, right? I add hum. Haulai hum al kaumu, because this is plural, right? Hum al kaumu, these are the people, okay? So I think that, alhamdulillah, we have understood a fair amount of uh, issues that is ma'rifah, and also we have also started to discuss the muraqab, the uh, you know the, the jumla and naqisa, okay, or ghayr mufida. So alhamdulillah, I mean I think this is it needs a little bit of practice, a little bit of revision. So I'm asking everybody to go back, revise, inshallah, okay, and um, let us see where where we get from there. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala help us to um, benefit from our participation in this and help us to learn this Arabic language and make it easy for us so that we can begin to understand the book. But what I want you to do is go into the Quran and you see dhalika, hadihi, haulai, ulaika, and you see all the damir and you see the words that you know, you know, you, you make it like it makes it easy for you to understand. So work at that level and may Allah bless us, guide us and strengthen us. And I think there's going to be one more session on Monday, 
inshallah, for us and with the Arabic language, then I'll communicate to you and tell you exactly what we are going to do in Ramadan. Um, we, uh, we might do one session for every week. I'm going to tell you which day it is, inshallah, so that we can participate in that and see how we can, um, what we can do in the end in all of this, right? So we ask Allah to help us and guide us and strengthen us and bless us to make our studies in this day easy, to help us to reach with Ramadan and to bless us to benefit from all its bounties and give us the best in this world and the hereafter and save us from hell. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Shalom wa la ilaha illa anta istaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Jazakum la khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah reward all of you with goodness too. Amen. I